<clears throat> Hello and welcome to another lesson on the book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. And as we come to this, we're in the middle of Peter's message to those who had gathered around seeing the miraculous healing of the man who was born lame. And we come to the part where he's going to call them to repentance. So let's pray. Father, first of all, may we always honor you and realize that it is your son whom we serve and your son whom we glorify. And may we do well at that. Now, Lord, give us ears to hear, give us minds to understand, and give us hearts that are responsive. Conform us to the image of your Son, that you would be glorified in all that we do or say. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we look at this, we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 3, verses 17 through 26, the rest of Acts chapter 3. We finish the sermon, and then before the... Um, before the people have a chance to respond, as they did at Pentecost, the temple authorities are going to come in in chapter 4, and uh, things will get a little bit tough for Peter and John. But let's just look at the rest of this sermon. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. Now, remember, he had just accused them of handing over the righteous one, of, of killing the author of life, and that God had raised him up. And so he's now um, moderating. You know, he's, he's, he's saying, you did this, but I know you did it in ignorance. You, you did it not knowing what you did. As, as Jesus' words, as he hung from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Um, as did also your ruler. So not only did you ask for Jesus to be crucified, not knowing what you were doing, but your leaders, your rulers didn't even realize what was going on. But what God foretold, this is verse 18, by the mouth of the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. So we could go to many passages. Isaiah 53 is the most prominent in my mind, but there's also passages in the Psalms where the crucifixion of, of the Messiah is described. And so it, it was prophesied that the Christ, the anointed one, the chosen of God, would be slain. Verse 19, repent, therefore, have a change of mind, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, Yeshua, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. So there's still a day coming when more is going to happen. Christ has gone into the heavens. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will remain there until all things have been fulfilled. And then comes the day of the Lord, the great and terrible day of the Lord. Verse 22, Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaim these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. And so there's that punchline. The punchline is, what are you going to do? Okay, Jesus was slain. He was slain in ignorance. You were culpable. You were willfully a part of that. Now what are you going to do? What is your response going to be? Peter says, repent. That's the response you need to have. You need to realize that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary 
for the forgiveness of your sins. And if you will repent, have a change of heart and mind that says, I believe that this is the Christ, the Son of God, who died there for me, then your sins will be forgiven and you will have a new and better, more glorious life. So this is the call to repent, to have that change of heart, that change of mind that changes the direction of our life, not just for today, not just for tomorrow, not just for next year, but for all eternity. And so he says that if they will, but what God foretold by the mouth of the prophets that as Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled, repent and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may then be able to send the Christ anew. Well, we know that we, as followers of Jesus Christ, are still awaiting the second coming of the Lord. We are waiting for the trump to sound, the archangel to cry out, for the heavens to be rolled back like a scroll, and for Jesus Christ to return. Many today are wondering, are these the last days? The answer is yes, not necessarily because Jesus is going to come tomorrow, but because even in Jesus' day, he called it the last days. The only question that we ever really have to do to answer is what am I going to do with Jesus? He died willingly on the cross to pay the penalty for my sins. Am I going to repent, turn away from my stubborn, self-willed, self-governed life and give myself to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Lord to be filled by his spirit and used for his glory? Or am I going to continue to strive to live to my glory and my comfort? That's always the question. So what are you going to do today? What are you going to do tomorrow? If you give yourself to the Lord, if you repent and turn away from your sins, they will be blotted out and refreshing will come. You will experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These will be yours, and your soul will be renewed and refreshed. Well, I hope that you have chosen to repent, to give yourself to the Lord, and to live to his glory, for that will make all the difference in your life, both today and for all eternity. Father, if there's anyone who listens today and who has not made that decision, I pray that they would. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, convict them right where they are. Help them to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that they might be saved. Because, Father, then seasons of refreshing will come and we'll be just that much closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's his name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Until the next time.